So today we have an interesting job. 1969 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Car's in mint condition. It's here to change the oil pan. Apparently the customer was jacking it up and the jack slipped and it damaged the oil pan. So we're going to change the oil pan. We're also going to change the front seal on the AC compressor. And uh, I think the harmonic balancer pulley is potentially damaged too. Boy, this car is uh, pretty clean. Looks like it's all basically original. A few upgraded chrome pieces to make it go faster, I guess. But otherwise it looks original. Hmm. Pretty nice. Let's have a look inside. Wow. I have to take my shoes off when I go in this thing. Anyways, this is what we're doing today. We're putting a new oil pan. Change the oil and filter while we're in there. And do the AC repairs. So here's what must have happened. He must have had a floor jack underneath the lift point here and the jack slipped and it crushed the bottom front of the oil pan and damaged the harmonic balancer pulley slightly. It's a little bit dented. We'll be able to take that off I think and and straighten that up, true it up. Uh, looks like we're gonna have to raise this engine and support it, so I'll have to check to see how much clearance there is. There's a bit of an oil leak coming from up above here. I don't know what that is. Fuel pump maybe. Definitely higher up. It's not from the oil pan. Yeah. Well, we'll take this torque converter cover off. And it looks like we're going to have to remove the starter, unfortunately. Yeah, starter's going to have to come off, so we'll have to disconnect the battery. Should disconnect the battery anyways with this kind of work. Well, I'll drain it tonight, let it sit till tomorrow, and hopefully it won't be dripping on me tomorrow. So I've removed both the drive belts. The AC belt was already off. Uh, air conditioning, I mean the uh, alternator and the power steering belt. And I've also removed the, the fan clutch because we have to lift the engine up and uh, this is a one piece shroud so the engine would only go up about half an inch and then the fan blade would hit the shroud up here so it should be fine now. There's enough movement in the radiator hose to raise the engine a couple of inches and there's enough clearance at the back on the distributor cap and the firewall to, so that we should be okay back there. Uh, we'll keep an eye on things as we're raising it anyways. So there's the uh, lower crank pulley. It only got damaged on one side here so being as how this is steel I think I'm going to straighten it, clean it up, deburr it. The pulley looks straight otherwise just that one side got damaged so uh, the chances of me finding a used one of these at the wrecking yards today is is slim, but it could be. We'll try and see how it comes out. So here's my setup for raising the engine. I've got the starter out, I've got the flywheel cover off, I've got the motor mount bolts out, and a support at the back of the car so it doesn't tip off the hoist, and raise the engine with this fixture that I made out of an axle shaft bolted to my transmission jack with a loop of steel on there so it picks up the bottom of the crank pulley. Um, sometimes I'll put two blocks of wood, sometimes I'll just leave it on the jack stand. We'll see how easy it is to get at things here. So there's the oil pan off. I had to raise the engine about you know, an inch and a quarter. There's the oil pan on the floor. You can see where it's damaged at the front. So now all we've got to do is clean up this gasket. Looks like it's been off before. This has got a cork gasket in there. In the factory, we never use cork gaskets. And uh, reattach the new gasket in place and put the new pan in. So I figured I'd try to show you just how hard it is to get this gasket off. It's been on here for several decades, so it doesn't want to come off. So I'm using an air scraper.
So that's what's involved in scraping that gasket off. I've had this air scraper for decades actually. I used to do inline six cylinder Jeep engines and the gasket was like cement on there. So that works quite well. The rest we can clean off with uh, a hand scraper. So there's the gasket surface mostly cleaned off. I got a few places left to touch it and spray it down with some brake clean. What's really important is to get all of the gasket out of this point, pot, spot where the uh, rear main cap attaches to the block and make sure there's no oil in there. That's why I brought this in last night and drained the oil. Uh, that way it has a chance to stop dripping. But it's pretty clean. A couple of small spots where I got to clean it up and next is to contact cement the four piece gasket into place with a little dab of RTV sealant in each one of the four corners. So there's the pan reinstalled. That pan's a little deeper, especially in this area over top of the cross member. It misses the cross member by about three eighths of an inch, which is good. Anyways, stainless steel bolts to hold it on, nice touch. Looks good. So basically it's just a reversal of the disassembly process. We're going to fix that pulley and put it back on too. So I got that pulley straightened out. There's the section where it was bent right there. Can't hardly see it. I sandblasted it, sanded it, painted it. Painted the inside of the pulley. Got fingerprints on the oil pan. Put the oil filter on. Trans cover on, painted. Starter back in. Battery cables got to be hooked up. And we put the belts on now. So now we got the engine all back together. I do have the AC compressor belt to put on still. But we're now we're going to change the front seal in the compressor or we're going to attempt to. I have a seal kit and we need to take that fancy little snap ring out of there. I recovered uh, very little refrigerant from the system. So there's the seal kit. Bought it off eBay, new open stock. It's got a ceramic thrust washer in there and a seal. Uh, to get this hub drive plate off, you need this special puller. I have a snap-on clutch. Then to pull that ceramic piece out, you need this tool. And then to grab the seal, you need this tool. These uh, I managed to borrow from an AC shop. And they probably haven't used them for about eh, 30 years. So we'll see how that ceramic seal comes out or the ceramic uh, piece comes out. I got the snap ring out in there and that ceramic part should just pull out now. So that grabs the inside of that ceramic part and you twist it and you pull it out and of course now we've lost vacuum in the system so the system is open. And this red, red handled tool grabs the seal and then you just pull the seal out. Now this kit has a, a couple of other pieces in here. It has an O-ring and some kind of thrust washer as well as a snap ring of course and I have to figure out if that's required or not. I don't see an o-ring in there yes there is an o-ring in there it goes around the outside of the ceramic part I've gotten it out with a small angled pick and I replaced it here you can see it on the camera here you can see that blue seal purple seal around the outside now so we're ready to reinstall it. I looked at the shaft, it looks pretty smooth. Not much we can do but put a new seal kit in it and recharge it and see what happens. So there's the seal in place. Now it's just a matter of pressing on the drive plate, adjusting the air gap. This one doesn't have a shim, this one's just pressed on. So I'll show you the tool for that. So it's kind of like a power steering pulley installer tool. It's very similar. Uh, this looks like a 3 8 uh, fine thread on the end of the compressor shaft. And make sure that key doesn't uh, fall out because that key is what drives it even though it's pressed on. This thing is in pristine shape for, for the age. 
And I gotta check the compressor clutch gap. I think it's about five thou, but I'll check it. So the system's holding a vacuum quite nicely. We're gonna reinstall that compressor while this is drawing down a vacuum. So the compressor is back installed and I go to hook up the uh, electrical and the ground wire falls off so I'm going to have to fix the ground wire it's bolted on right here. And uh, then we'll look at what I'm going to recharge this to. Uh, 20 to 30, 20 to 25 thousandths of an inch air gap. I got about 15. It's not dragging so I think it's fine but we'll see how it is. So normally the refrigerant charge capacity would be on a tag on the heater vent, uh, heater housing, but it's gone. Uh, none of my information systems go back this far, and I can't find anything online. Anywhere from from uh, 33 to 55 ounces. So I'm going to start with a one and a half kilos, which is almost three pounds, and. Uh, then see how it performs. Well, the compressor is running. Uh, the lines I can see are frosting up and getting cold air. But the low side pressure is too high and the high side pressure is too low. So we're going to try and adjust the charge level and see if we can make a difference. So I'm going to recover it again and, and try maybe one kilo and see how that works. There could be a problem with the uh, expansion valve in this thing. But it was making cool air. We'll see how one kilo works. That's 2.25, 2.2 pounds. So I charged it with three quarters of a pound and the weird thing is it's cooling, not as well as it was with uh, our three quarters of a kilo, not as much as it was. High side pressure is around 45, low side pressure is around 130 and I started looking at this thing somebody's put the conversion fittings on the wrong port that's why it's not working properly because this is the low side and this is the high side so whoever did this conversion got the fittings mixed up Hopefully we can recover it and fix that. So we're recovering this thing for a third time now. I'm sure these are on the wrong ports. Because this is definitely the low side. And the high side comes out of the compressor on this line, goes through this muffler and into the condenser. So this is high side and they've got a low side service port on there. Hopefully we can just switch them. Interesting. So I wondered how the hell this thing could be frosting up the low side fittings when the low side pressure was 130 PSI. Remember the pressure temperature correlation between uh, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and the pressure. 120 PSI would be 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And it certainly was a lot colder than that with frost on the lines. So fortunately those two fittings just interchanged. They're both the same size so whoever did this the first time had a 50% chance of getting it right. So now we're just going to draw it down to a vacuum and recharge it. I think I'm going to try about 1.2 kilos, maybe 1.3 and then see how it performs. So we're going to try 1.3 kilograms which is just about two and a half pounds. These systems used to hold around three, three and a half pounds. So that's more reasonable. 45 on the low side, 95 on the high side. Feels pretty cool, but I think I might try a little bit more refrigerant. Well, that looks pretty decent, and we're running about 180 pounds on the high side, and it's roughly 80 degrees in the shop here. Let's see how the air is coming out of the vents. It's definitely cool. Yeah, it's decent. High speed on this blower motor doesn't work for some reason. Definitely working. 
So, that was fun. We'll call this one a wrap.